Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox. I hope everyone's having an amazing weekend so far. Today's video is one of my favorite ones to create, and this is a little segment I do on my channel called DIYing Your DMs, which is actually adapted from a series that the Sorry Girls did, and I just absolutely love their channel, and I love the concept of taking DMs that you guys send me and then turning them into real life DIY tutorial projects for you guys. So essentially I asked you guys over on Instagram, which if you are not already following, make sure to do so. I'll put it on the screen right here. It is Lone Fox home. I literally post every single day over there. I post feed photos. I also post a ton of stories, promotional discounts for my website, exclusive DIYs, just a ton of fun things. And I also always ask your guys opinions on room makeovers, show you sneak peeks, and also ask about DIYing your DMs. So I got so, so, so many people sending over requests on projects that I should DIY. And I selected four of them that I really wanted to do. And that is what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. And if you are not already, make sure to click that red subscribe button to become part of the Lone Fox family. Family. And also don't forget to click the little bell icon next to it. That way you are notified every time I upload a brand new video. But besides the point, let's go ahead and get into today's projects because these are some super cute DIYs. So the first project was sent in by Katie Kirkendall and I'll put her little at on the screen right now. So thank you, Katie, for sending this project in. She basically sent in this piece here, which is a super cool. I've actually seen these quite a bit. I'll pop it up on the screen. This is like a candle holder, but I believe they're made by a specific company. And I also believe that they're made of ceramic. So I was like, I'm going to try to emulate something like this using some wire, clay, and some spray paint. And I think I did a pretty darn good job. So let's jump on into this project. To create this candle holder, we're going to want to construct some form of supportive base for the clay to kind of sit on. So I'm actually using a 12 gauge aluminum wire, which is a pretty thick wire. And I'm going to be wrapping it around a circular object a couple of times to create the bottom structure of our candle holder. And then you're also just going to want to kind of secure those two pieces together with some additional wire as shown here. And once you have done that, then you're going to want to create kind of the little upwards piece that's going to elevate the second tier of this candle holder, I guess you could say. And on the second tier, you're going to want to wrap an additional circle as I'm doing here and then just pull that strand right back down and then just wrap your excess tail once you snip it around your base that you already started with. Keep in mind that this wire base is not going to be shown at all. It's more to just give like more of a structural integrity to the piece. So I then went in with some Sculpey white clay, just your basic clay, and I'm going to be wrapping this around the entire wire base, making sure to cover absolutely everything on the top, the sides and the bottom, just giving it a nice even coating and you can determine the thickness however thick or thin you want to apply this on there I think I did about a half inch to three quarters inch all the way around I also added it on the top portion as well and stuck my little pillar candle or sorry not pillar candle but little candlestick in there to make sure that it would be able to stand up as shown here uh, that way when it bakes you're gonna have a perfect little fit so I also added a little bit of water to the whole piece that is just to smooth it out essentially the clay will get a little bit wet and you can kind of smooth and mold it a little bit more than it already is is. So once it's at this point, you're going to want to bake according to the clay's instructions. And then I'm using this really unique stone texture spray paint. And this is in the color Lime Wash. And it has this very sandy um, texture that kind of has browns and almost a little bit of like a turquoisey color in it. It's super, super pretty. So I sprayed multiple coats of this, letting it dry in between and hitting every single crack and crevice of this candlestick holder. And once it is dry, that's your finished candlestick holder. Our next project was sent in by Crystal and her at is Crystal Denise underscore underscore, I believe. And she actually asked if I can DIY something similar to this CB2 Able Round 48 inch mirror. So this actually retails for $499, but do keep in mind that it is a four foot mirror. Now I'm going to be creating a smaller scale version of this, but using similar techniques used on this mirror to kind of emulate the style of it and kind of give it that vintage aged kind of hammered metal look. I just really love this vibe right now. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of create a smaller mirror. But of course, you can use the technique that I'm going to be sharing with you guys on larger mirrors, square mirrors, oval mirrors, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to share with you guys how to get this kind of hammered, forged metal look. 
starting off this project again by kneading up some clay. This is the same white Sculpey clay that I used prior. I bought a huge box of it, so I'm just reusing all of it, or not reusing it, but using it up. So basically what I'm starting off by doing is I'm going to be kneading up some clay, and I'm going to be molding this around the exterior of a circular mirror. I'll link below the circular mirror that I used. You're also going to, going to want to make sure that you hit those edges and also kind of transfer a little bit to the backside as well. That way it's secure on there, and then me saying hi to you guys. Um, next, what I'm going to be doing is kind of pushing the clay in a very organic shape because I really don't want this to look like a super circular object. I want it to look more of like an abstract kind of like randomly cut mirror. So I placed this all the way around the exterior to first give it like a little bit of an organic shape, but I also did go on and add some exterior clay pieces just to kind of mold the shape a little bit wider than the circle actually is. So I'm adding the texture here with my fingertips by pressing into the surface of the clay. And as you can see here, I'm adding a little bit more clay on to make the shape a bit more organic. So here's my finished off mirror. I actually baked the entire thing and yes, it is totally safe to bake a mirror because clay is baked at a very low temperature. So I baked it for the clay instructions. And then I used my brass gilded paint, which I will link this below. This is where it all starts to come together. Look at that incredible texture done with your fingers. Like I am just obsessed with the way that this looks. You can do a thinner border if you want to, a thicker border. And also this gilded paint comes in so many different colors and tones of metal. So you can really customize it to whatever you personally like. So I went around, make sure I hit everything. And then I used some antique gold rub and buff on top of the surface just to give it a bit more of an antiqued touch. And again, I'll link this product below because I really love the way that it kind of lets the gold shine through but gives it this really antique flair. So this is what the gold mirror ended up looking like. I flipped it over and added a little bit of hot glue on the back side and a piece of scrap macrame cord and just made sure that was secured on there. That way I could hang it on the wall. Our next project is actually a hanging planter, which I thought I already had conquered every hanging planter on the earth. I've done so many of them, but Tina Marie Doe, which I love that username, sent in a really, really cute hanging planter that almost has these little brass rings on it. It looks like it has three brass rings and then some macrame cord. And I personally had already ordered a bulk amount of brass rings for a project a while back from Amazon. And by the way, guys, everything I do feature in this video will be linked below. So if I use any supplies you're curious about, I always link them in the description box. And basically I had the macrame my cord and I had the rings for this project so I figured let's give it a go. I already had all the supplies and this is how it turned out. This next project is a super simple one, especially for a macrame hanger. I used three gold rings and I also used some macrame cord. I cut these to two yards each and I used two of them, folded them in half, and I'm going to be attaching it with a lark's head knot to two of the rings. So what we're going to be doing next is doing a half square knot, which is essentially as shown here, you're going to put your left strand over the two centers, right strand over the top, under, and then pull up through that loop on the left side. And this is gonna be very repetitive from here. You're actually gonna be repeating the process over and over and over again. And that is what's going to be creating the spiral macrame. So once again, you guys are gonna see, put the left one over the top of the two middles. The right one's gonna go over the top of the um, right strand and under the middle, then up through the left side. It's kind of challenging to talk about. I feel like it's always hard to talk about macrame, but it's just very repetitive and you're gonna repeat the process. And as you do it, it's actually going to start spiraling, very similar to the inspo picture that was sent over. So once you reach the end of this, I just tied all of the strands together in one really big knot. And then I was able to just cut any of those strands at the end to make sure that it was nice and good. And this is gonna be super strong to hang up. I wish I had a smaller ring like the inspo photo showed, but I didn't have one on hand. I then went ahead and placed in my third ring, which is going to attach to the bottom of both of the two rings we already macrameed. And I basically wrapped macrame cord around this about four times. And then on the inside, I did a super, super tight square knot, which is right over left and then left over right. And square knots are honestly like extremely strong. So this is 1000% gonna hold up. I cut off the excess tails and you can add a drop of glue or nail polish if you'd like to make sure that this um, stays super bonded, but this basically finishes off your planter.
And last but not least, this one is kind of a first for the DIYing Your DM series, but I had a Lone Fox family member, Justin Ray. He messaged me and basically said that he has a channel that he creates DIY projects on, and he would love for me to kind of recreate one of the projects he did, which was this insane faux pompous grass. And I personally really love the look of pompous grass, but it can get kind of expensive. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and try to recreate what he did. Now, Justin has a DIY channel, which I will make sure to link below. So you guys have to check him out because he has some really, really amazing DIYs. And he did a full on tutorial on the DIY pompous grass. And I was like, I kind of want to give this a go myself. It looked so realistic, but it also kind of had this like kitschy handmade element to it, which I really liked. And so I went ahead and tried to recreate what he did. And this is how it turned out. To start off our pompous grass, we're going to need some skewers. Now, in Justin's video, he actually used some wooden dowels, but I had these on hand already, and I also had some cotton cording on hand as well. This is from Target. I believe his is from the dollar store. So I started off actually by gluing two wooden skewers together in the center point, but I knew this would not be strong enough, so I also cut just a, li a little piece of printer paper, and I hot glued it around to kind of create a more structural joint support at the middle of those two pieces, and kind of just roll the paper in between the glue and made sure that this was just a super strong bonded section because we don't want this to of course bend and break over time but next what I did following his tutorial was I wrapped the entire string in the cording this is going to kind of give it a more natural look and almost make it look to appear as one full solid piece and not constructed from like wood dowels and from string so I wrapped the entire thing including our paper joint in the center which I just think looks like a nice little knot in the wood once it is covered in the string so this is our finished off little uh, base for our pompous grass I then cut a six inch inch by three inch piece of cardboard and I used a ruler to create a downward slope as shown here. Um, this is going to be the template for us to create the pompous grass portion. So I cut this off of our template and essentially we're going to be able to create some large loops, some small loops as I'm doing here and some middle sized loops in the center of this. So I wrapped it about 25 times per section um, as you can see and then I pulled it off put my string through and tied it into a tassel. If you've ever created a tassel before, this is the same exact thing that we're doing. You are just not going to go ahead and put the top portion of the tassel. We're just going to be creating these little strands here. So now I'm doing a middle section where you're just going to be wrapping it around the middle of your template putting the string through and then tying it in a knot to just conjoin all of those wrapped strands together and then cutting the loop on the opposite side. So as you can see here, now I'm creating a large one. So you're going to have a large, medium, and small, and you're going to need a total of six of each. So here's the large one, tying that off. And this is what it's going to look like. You're going to lay it in this um, form as well, and you can cut off any stray ends. So here's our small, medium, and large, and then here are six smalls, six mediums, and six larges. We're going to lay them down with the largest first, kind of adding about a half of an inch to an inch gap in between, and I'm going to be doing three on the front side and three on the back side. So I'm using a dab of hot glue and just placing it down closer to the top, um, probably about three inches from the top, flipping it over, and then I'm going to be adding in the opposite pieces in between those sections. So one, two, and three. We're going to be placing the other long strands on. Next, I'm gonna go in and use our medium length and I'm going to be adding them onto the top and bottom. This is kind of where you can play around with the spacing or whatever you wanna to get to achieve the look that you personally like. If you want it a little bit more full, maybe you can do more than six or you can make them longer. However you please, you can kind of see how you can vary this to your personal style. So then I added in some smaller sections on the top and some smaller sections on the bottom. This is going to cascade it into that pompous grass look, which we all know and love. Then I use just a regular comb to kind of comb out the strands. Justin did this as well. I feel like his string probably would combed a little bit easier. Mine seemed to be a bit tighter, but it did fray the ends a little bit, which I think definitely gave it a little bit of that natural kind of fluffy look that the pompous grass has. And then I used some hairspray. He did this too, to kind of give it some structure. So you're gonna spray it with hairspray and kind of just twist it and fluff it. And the hairspray is kind of gonna hold it into place and you could spray it as much or as little as possible. But this basically finishes off and here you can see me creating another one. I created two of them for a terracotta vase that I have and that finishes off your pompous grass. You could style them in a vase or jug. So 
So those are all of my projects that I DIY'd from your guys' DMs, and I hope that you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. Again, all of the tools and supplies that I did use in this video, whether it be the rings, the macrame cord, the spray paint, the clay, I link absolutely everything in the description box below, so make sure to take a look at that if you are curious. And if you are not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week, and click that little bell icon next to it. That way, you are notified every time I upload a brand new video. Catch you guys all in my next one. Bye, guys.